Hello, I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for October 16th, 2013. On today's show, photons on demand enable compact optical chips, a spinning disk microscope peers deeply into a cell, and narrow spectrum UV light may reduce surgical infections. Multiple imperfect photon sources can be combined on a single silicon chip to produce a much higher quality source, say researchers in Australia. Such photons on demand may help create extremely compact optical chips. A team at the University of Sydney say that developing a chip that can deliver one photon at a time at very high rates would provide scalability for quantum technologies that could enhance computing and communications. While the creation of a single photon in an optical circuit has been possible for some time, previous demonstrations were difficult to do and scale up or have been excessively noisy. This has limited single photon technology to being either very slow or having a high probability of error. The quantum science community has been waiting for over a decade for a compact optical chip that delivers exactly one photon at a time at very high rates. The Australian team said a key breakthrough for their work was the previous development of photonic chips that slow light at the center of excellence for ultra-high bandwidth devices for optical systems. That makes single photon generation more likely, reducing energy demands and allowing extremely compact devices with lengths no longer than 200 microns, they said. The smaller the systems are, the more they can fit onto a chip, and the more they can fit onto a chip, the more likely they are to guarantee a single photon when they want it. The next step is to integrate all the components onto a single chip so that the on-demand push-button single photon source can be deployed. A new microscopy technique with unprecedented focusing ability will allow structures deep within cells, including viruses and bacteria, to be investigated for the first time. Recent advances in optical physics, such as super-resolution microscopy, have made it possible to use fluorescence to study complex structures smaller than 200 nanometers. However, only the structures at the bottom of the cell can be imaged clearly that way. The nucleus and other vital information are in the middle of the cell, while bacterial and viral infections are scattered throughout. This has imposed considerable limitations for biologists. The new technique developed at Queen Mary University of London is called Spinning Disk Statistical Imaging, or SDSI, say that five times fast. It uses a spinning disk system to image structures of 80 nanometers or less anywhere in the cell. The spinning disk microscope produces focused images at high speed because it has a disk with an array of tiny holes in it that removes the out-of-focus light. Combining the microscope with new fluorescent probes that switch between bright and dark states rapidly allows bioengineers to see structures three times smaller than could usually be seen using standard light microscopes. The group has been able to visualize chromatin, the protein structure that controls DNA expression, and the nuclear membrane. They also got more detailed images of structures previously imaged using other methods and were able to look at protein complexes smaller than 200 nanometers in the nucleus, which hasn't been done before. A paper on the SDSI system appears in PLOS One. Infections from surgical wounds are a serious problem, killing as many as 8,200 people a year in the U.S. alone. A new Columbia University Medical Center study suggests that narrow-spectrum ultraviolet light could dramatically reduce such infections without damaging human tissue. Scientists have known for years that UV light from a standard germicidal lamp is highly effective at killing bacteria. Such lamps are routinely used to decontaminate surgical equipment. But UV light is almost never used in the operating room because it's harmful to human tissue. The Columbia team hypothesized that a very narrow spectrum of UV light, around 207 nanometers, might be capable of destroying bacteria while leaving tissue unaffected. UV light at that wavelength can't reach the nucleus of human cells or the sensitive cells in the skin and eyes. But because bacteria are much smaller than human cells, the light can reach their DNA. The team found that 207 nanometer light was as effective at killing MRSA bacteria as a conventional UV lamp, but the narrow spectrum light killed 1,000-fold less skin cells than did standard UV light. 
In experiments on skin, exposure to a standard UV lamp caused extensive precancerous changes in the epidermis, while exposure to the same level of 207 nanometer light did not. The results suggest that the narrow spectrum light could be an effective add-on to current infection control measures if used continuously during surgery to kill bacteria as it lands on the wound. In vivo tests are now being conducted. The study was published in PLOS One. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the photonics industry's only weekly newscast. As always, you can write to us with your questions or comments at lightmatters@photonics.com. Thanks for watching, and Laura and I will be back next week. Thank you.